We don't have Tim here to help us um, get ourselves going, so I'm left to me, which I'm the worst clock watcher in the world. So sorry that we got a little bit late start. Um, we are um, delighted to see everybody today. Happy Palm Sunday. And um, just to let you know, Tim is out of town visiting his uncle in North Carolina, who just recently went into hospice. So we'll put him in our prayers as well. Um, I'm just trying to think. In leading worship, we're um, using um, our confirmation class is going to help lead worship today. We have Ella. Um, Maddie was going to be here. I'm not sure if she's running late um, to help with that. In the bulletin, it does say that they're going to be doing a reading, and that's on me. I um, was not able to get them together to go over it and rehearse it, so I'll be doing that reading. Um, there are some pictures that go with it that didn't work with our equipment, so Jim is going to compile a, a little thing and send it out in the email with the worship service. So, um, Do we have any other announcements? And prayer concerns to share? John. Tom Luby. Tom and I'll make sure that um, Jim gets that too. Oh, here she comes, good. Oh. <laughs> it's good. Um, Tom Ruby, anyone else? How about Joyce? Yeah. Yay, welcome. <laughs> Any other? And I think we ran short of bulletins, which is a good kind of problem, except um, I don't know if we have time to run off more. So if we could share, that would be great. Um, thank you. So I am excited to introduce Ella and Maddie, who will be leading worship with us today. And um, I think, if barring any other announcements or concerns or joys, we will um, listen with uh, prayerful hearts to our organ prelude.
This is a day the Lord has made. Let praise surround the throne. All the days, hours, and minutes are time and Blessed be the Lord who comes each moment in power. Blessed be the Lord who fills our moments with grace and peace. Hosanna in the highest. Let us worship the Lord all the time. Please join me in the prayer of adoration. God of all time, who entered our time, we are grateful for the ways you entered time and space for our sakes. We praise you for Jesus, who did not flout his status, but came in humility. We remember his triumphal entry that fulfills scripture. He instigated a parade, even with the cross looming larger on the horizon. His life, death, and resurrection brought the full extent of your mercy, love, and justice. He urges us to follow, to see that he has freed us from the captivity of our sin. So we come in humility, knowing you have given us your all. We can never offer enough such overwhelming love. We praise you for your kindness and his strength that lifted our burdens to the cross. Receive our worship in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. Our opening hymn is page 197. <coughs> confession. Loving Father, your mercy and forgiveness is a mystery to us. Forgive us when we fail to show mercy to others when they fall short of our expectations. Forgive us when we speak silent when other words are in trouble. Forgive us when we prefer doing what is easy to do when you make us right. Forgive us when we ignore your spirit trying to get our attention. Help us to forgive others as you forgive us. Inspire us with the costly choices Jesus made as he set his face like flint 
and move towards the cross, and forgive us the courage to follow. Amen. Declaration of Pardon. The psalmist reminds us to give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The steadfast love endures forever. We are sure, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we are forgiven and to be at peace. Amen. Thank you. Our responsive reading is a traditional psalm for Palm Sunday, uh, Psalm 118. We're doing verses 1 and 2, and then skipping down to 19 to 29, and you'll find that on page 495. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. So stand and um, state what it is that we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. redeemed and forgiven people of God, let's turn to each other with a sign of God's peace. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with
always such a joyful thing. <laughs> Please join me for a prayer of illumination. Gracious God, you are our courage in the midst of challenge and our comfort in the midst of distress. The way of the cross is a difficult one, so we are grateful for the scripture that provides us witness and assurance of your presence with us. We pray your Holy Spirit will pour light into your word that is read and proclaimed today so that we will be strengthened to do your will. Amen. A reading from Isaiah is chapter 50, verse 4 through 9, and that's on page 594. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. In our gospel, from the account of Matthew, Chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, and that's on page 802. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, We'll go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Well, if anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, well, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. Since uh, Transfiguration Sunday, right before Ash Wednesday, we've been following the lectionary readings that trace Jesus' path from Galilee to Jerusalem. The Passover holiday was pre-selected. He was to be like a new Moses, only leading people out of the slavery to sin instead of slavery to Egyptians, liberating them to begin the wilderness journeys of an internal kind. And not only was he to be a new Moses, he was also the Passover lamb, whose blood was smeared on door jams that prevented the plague of death 
the consequence to Pharaoh for refusing to set the children of Israel free. At the transfiguration, Jesus met Elijah and Moses on the mountain where they planned this strategy. And Jesus had set his face in other gospels. It does report, and like the psalm, like flint. And he was steeled and resolved to take this crucial journey to fulfill scripture and his purpose for coming into human life. On the way, he stopped to teach, to heal, to answer questions, get into arguments. He tried to prepare his disciples for what was to come as he set in motion the hysteria that was going to lead to his arrest. In the chapter before our Palm Sunday narrative, Matthew reported that Jesus was teaching about landowners who paid laborers equally regardless of what time of day they had been called into work, a controversial concept both to the employers who worked all day and to their, I mean, the workers who toiled all day and to their employers who would have to get every penny's worth out of the wages they had to put out. Jesus again explained to his disciples what he was going to be facing when they got to Jerusalem. And he had to deflect requests of things like, who is going to get the best seats at the banquet table? So he noted, first of all, that it was not in his authority to decide this. And then he went on to explain that those who are considered the greatest in heaven are those who are considered on earth to be servants, those who care for others, even over their own needs and aspirations. On the road, just outside of Bethlehem, he was accosted by two blind men, and they were crying out, help us. They called him the son of David. And when the crowd sternly tried to quiet them, they just yelled even louder. Jesus stopped for them and filled with compassion, he healed them. So it's no wonder this crowd was following him, calling him the son of David and saying, save us. And so now he is on the hill, Mount of Olives, looking over Jerusalem, knowing full well what he must do. As I read the Isaiah passage, I couldn't help but wonder if it was one of the passages that came to his mind as he reinforced his resolve to instigate the excitement that would be putting him in the spotlight of the authorities. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. So after the disciples brought back the colt, having found it and taken it just as Jesus had described, I imagine that Jesus paused a moment before starting down the Mount of Olives, and a thought that would be something like in our modern vernacular, it's showtime. He started off, the crowd still following him, all of them shouting like the blind men, incorrigibly, calling him son of David, implying allegiance to the true heir and king. They shouted Hosanna, which we always sing on Palm Sunday. We think of it as like, hooray, huzzah, you know, but it actually means save us and certainly echoes the psalmist's cry. Their shouts echoed our responsive reading in Psalm 118, which is a triumphal entry psalm of a king. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And we echo these cries, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord in our communion liturgy. It is a perplexing thing that such a joyful occasion, Jesus seemingly has come into the recognition by the people as being their Messiah, sent from God to save the people. The crowds and the Roman and Jewish authorities in Jerusalem, however, viewed this procession as a prelude 
to military insurrection and became alarmed. As we journey now from Palm Sunday through Holy Week, the measures that Jesus took to ensure that the state of alarm would exacerbate, a lot happens during this week, culminating with Jesus celebrating a final meal with his friends, onto betrayal, arrest, the brutality of a mock trial, to his humiliating execution. So we need to pause a bit, slow down our hurried pace in order to take it all in. Because the significance of our salvation history cannot be glossed over with a quick glance or to skip right over it into Easter, the joy that we will celebrate. So I invite you to ponder the events of this week as you go through your week. Give your minds and hearts a chance to deepen the magnitude of this wondrous love that God has shown to the, the world in general and to each of us individually. Several years ago, I came across a reading from the Iona community written by John Bell, and I would like to share that with you. It's given my, myself, I guess, some, some deeper meaning and deeper understanding. Um, it gives us a glimpse of that week, and it's the last leg of the journey that Jesus walked. It's called He Will Walk. He will walk a little in front of us towards Jerusalem. He will not be scared, although we are a little apprehensive. If we try to discourage him, he will recognize the devil in our voice and he will tell us so in no uncertain terms. And then he will go on again in faith towards the temple. He will walk a little in front of us into controversy. He will not be scared, though we are a little apprehensive. He will argue with the intelligent, contradict the self-assured, embrace the untouchable, upset bank balances by his outlandish behavior in the sanctuary, and weep in public. Then he will go on again in faith towards a garden. He will walk a little in front of us into Gethsemane. He will not be scared, although we are a little apprehensive. He will sweat blood. He will ask God if there is another way. And when God says no, he will take the traitor's kiss, the soldier's spit, the bile and venom from the princes of religion, and then he will go on again in faith towards the cross. He will walk a little in front of us towards Calvary. He will not be scared. No, he will not be scared. He will feel the pain of wood and nails. But more than this, he will feel the weight of all the evil, all the malice, all the pettiness, all the sin of the world heaped on his shoulders. He will not throw off that weight, though he could. He will not give back evil for evil, return malice for malice, take revenge on the petty-minded, or spew out hate on all who have despised and rejected him. He will not give back the sin of the world. No, he will take it away into death, into hell, so that he can lead us into heaven. And then he will go on in faith towards the resurrection. He will walk a little behind us through the graveyard. 
He will wait until we are sure that he has died and we admit our complicity in his life's ending. And then he will come up behind us and say our name so that we can say his forever. Amen. Our hymn for reflection is page 686. As we listen to the beautiful music of Jamie's offertory, it gives us opportunity to reflect on the deliberate nature of Jesus' walk into Holy Week and to think about our place as those who follow.
Gracious God, we cannot help but feel amazed that the depths of your love and the breadth of your grace you have given to us. We know that we can never repay the enormous gift of our salvation, yet we know that in your hands any gift will be magnified in service to you. We pray that you will use these gifts as you use us. Bless us with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love so that we can exhibit your emerging heavenly kingdom in our midst. We pray that these gifts in all we do will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to glorify you and your Son, Jesus. Amen. And our communion hymn is page 202. Um, let's just sing verses 1 through 3. Um, one, two, and three. Thank you.
Yet we were drawn to the power of sin and death. So you gave us the law to guide us. You called prophets to call us back to your life of life. Yet we preferred to go our own way. So for this reason, you sent Jesus into the world. The world that you love, so that we might be saved. You gathered us in, invited us to venture out to places that you will show us. For we follow the one who went into the dark shadows of life, bearing your love, <coughs> so we can see the truth, love, and the transformation that bears your light. We have come to your table, giving you thanks, for claiming us as your children, and for equipping us with scripture and the gift of faith in our community of faith. We have come to praise you. We praise you joining our voices with choirs of angels and with the faithful from every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God. of our living Savior and 
until he comes again. Friends, the days of God will be over. The body of Christ grows in us. Francis, Merle, 
pray that for the disasters that confront our communities, that there are organizations like our PCUSA Disaster Relief for our help through the one great hour of sharing. Pray for our confirmation class and for their leadership. Grateful for their help. And as we prepare to renew our commitment to live as your disciples, Hear us as we pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but to the rest of the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. to our regular routines, but also into Holy Week. We are invited to observe the walk that Jesus took after that triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We are encouraged to follow him through our prayers, self-examination, fasting in a way that is meaningful to us, scattering random acts of kindness and works of love, and meditating on the story of our faith. May the love of God, our Father, the grace of our brother, Jesus Christ, and the energy of the Holy Spirit, our companion, teacher, and comforter, go with us everywhere we go. Amen. <laughs>